second Sunday after the Epiphany, and we pray that God would richly bless our time uh, together in his name. I know we have some guests with us today, and uh, we encourage our guests, uh, to, if you haven't done so already, to fill out a Connect card, and you can place that in the offering plate uh, later on in the service, as well as uh, we have a guest book uh, back in the, in the narthex. Uh, today's uh, message will focus on the uh, Old Testament reading. The next few weeks, we will be uh, focusing on uh, each of the Old Testament readings, and today uh, we uh, see the, uh, prof, uh, the uh, servant of God named Samuel. And so we'll consider uh, uh, what uh, God says to him, and uh, today our, the title of the message is A Listening Lesson. That's what uh, God has given us today, is a listening lesson. And uh, we want to thank the praise team for uh, leading us in worship and in song uh, today, and as always. And uh, also, as you walked in, you should have received the blue prayer sheet, uh, and we'll uh, be lifting up uh, the people named here in prayer uh, later on in the service uh, today. So may the Lord uh, bless our worship, and as we, today we begin in the name of uh, the triune God, the, the name into which we are baptized, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the praise team leads us in our first song entitled, Build My Life.
Please join me in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, indeed you are holy and there is no one like you. No one beside you because you have loved us with an everlasting love and sent uh, your son Jesus to redeem us uh, from our sin and uh, to make us your own and to call us in, uh, to service for, for you and for your purposes. Lord, give us joy today as we gather in your name, and uh, may uh, we uh, sing and praise uh, the beautiful name of Jesus as uh, we uh, not only gather, but also as we are sent uh, to serve you uh, in the coming days. Uh, we uh, commend all that we uh, do and, and say today into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. We sing, what a beautiful name. It's in that powerful name of Jesus that we come before our Lord and uh, lay our sins and confess them and receive his abundant forgiveness. As we come before the Lord today, I invite you to stand as you are able.
As God's word tells us, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The praise team uh, leads us in the song, Here I Am, Lord.
The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my mind down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have me in, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and enter out the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were, brought, you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body." 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To honor our Lord Jesus Christ and his words, I invite you as you are able to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip with, was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, are you basking in the warmth of Florida? Yeah, don't, don't, don't say it's cold because our, those of us, especially those of us that are former Midwesterners, our friends are waking up, their temperature has a minus sign in front of it. And there's like maybe two digits after that minus sign. Okay, so yeah, this is the Florida warmth. Okay, um, so um, this morning I'd like to um, um, just just a, just a second here. I will talk to you after service. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, all right, okay, enough of that. Then. How long would you pay attention to me if I kept on texting? <laughs> Which, while you sat there waiting for me to finish? Or what would you get out of the sermon if I interrupted it every now and then, every Sunday, to uh, answer uh, the text. You'd be distracted, mo most likely, right? And probably a little disappointed. I mean, pastor, come on, this is church. Can't we just leave the text till later? And you'd probably stop listening to me because I wasn't giving you and this service my full attention. Now, we could obviously reverse the situation. 
Imagine how hard it would be for me to speak to you if you were all either on your phones or simply talking to each other. In time, I would probably give up trying if that continued on and on and on. And what I did with my cell phone just now can help us understand the way we sometimes, myself included, the way we often listen to God and even the way he speaks to us. Today we focus on the Old Testament reading, like I said uh, we would in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll be each of the, these le next few weeks we'll be focusing on the Old Testament reading, and today we focus on God's calling Samuel, and we will be led to see these connections. In the process, we'll be reminded also of how important it is to give God our attention and to really listen to what He has to say. And so our prayer is that with God's help and the help of the Holy Spirit, we would indeed listen. We would listen with the ears of a servant and then respond with the actions of a servant. Okay, so those two things. Listen with the ears of a servant. Respond with the actions of a servant. So let's take a look at that man named Samuel that uh, uh, those uh, two books of the Bible are named after, First and Second Samuel. You see, Samuel was one of those uh, miracle, ba what we might call those miracle babies of the Bible. Uh, a barren woman named Hannah uh, prayed earnestly. She prayed earnestly for a son, and she vowed that if God enabled her to conceive and give birth to a son, she would turn him over to serve the Lord all of his life. And so after her, Samuel was born, her mother Hannah did indeed offer her young son back to the Lord's service. Now it's important to note what was going on at that time and the spiritual condition of the people, uh, God's people at that time. You see, many uh, back then were ignoring God. They were openly ignoring his commands. They were doing whatever they wanted in life and even living immoral lives. See, nothing, you know, nothing's new under the sun, as the Bible says. And so we heard in today's reading, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. <laughs> that kind of sounds kind of funny because the word of the Lord was rare. What does that mean? Well, basically it means because God's people were not listening to him, he simply stopped speaking to them. But that was about to change. God would indeed use Samuel to open the ears of his people. When he basically says, listen, listen to the Lord, that would be Samuel's message. And he himself would be a living example of how that is done. Samuel listened to the Lord with the ears of a servant and then responded with the actions of a servant. We are told one night that Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, and then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered him, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. So Samuel had the ears of a servant. When he thought Eli was calling him, he ran to see what he needed. But the thing was, it was Eli wasn't calling him. If you've ever been called out of bed at night, well, when that happens, usually it's not good, right? Okay? And if you've been woken up repeatedly, uh, well, it's hard to keep a good attitude. Um, I... <laughs> Was, it was just yesterday when we had to get up in the middle of the night to attend to our very young children, right? Okay? And uh, most parents do fine when one of their children calls for them in the night, but when it happens several times and you're losing sleep, it can get a bit frustrating. And how would we feel if all of those calls appeared to be false alarms? It would be easy and be tempted to just stop you know, Stop responding. But in Samuel, we see someone with different set of ears. The ears of a servant. 
We are also told Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Now, obviously, Samuel knew who God was. He was serving him at the temple. But he did not yet know the Lord on a personal level. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Certainly, again, Samuel had the ears of a servant. Notice Samuel doesn't say something like, well, I already went in there twice, and there was nothing, so I'm just going to tune that, whatever that voice is, I'm just going to tune it out. So let's ask ourselves the question. What kind of ears do we have when it comes to listening to the Lord? Do we have the ears of a servant ready to listen and follow God's word? The ears of a servant, or do we have the ears of a skipper? Who wants to only hear what we want to hear? When God calls, do we respond? Do we say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening? Or have we sometimes begun to say, listen, Lord, your servant is speaking? Now, don't get me wrong. God wants to hear us speak to him. We call that prayer. He, God wants to listen to our prayers. But I have a question. Who speaks first? Do we only listen for the answer we want to hear from God as after we have prayed to him and asked him for what we want? Or do we speak to God in prayer based upon the love and the promises that he has first spoken to us? The action of listening to someone is often an expression of love and respect for that person. Just as love cannot be forced from someone, it's a response that is freely given. And so listening can't be forced from someone either. Even if I tied you to your pew, I couldn't force you to listen to me. If you didn't want to listen, you could still ignore me and even the sound of my voice in your, when it hit your ears. So in order to give us the ears of a servant, God first extends his love to us. He breaks the bonds of sin that bind us, and through the blood of Jesus, he buys us and brings us out of our service to ourselves and our self-centered ways, and he brings us to service to God and his goodness. And then we have every reason to be attentive to what he has to say. Having then the ears of a servant, also implies that we are willing to listen closely and carefully to the Lord. We don't assume that we know what he has to say. Even if we have read the Bible many times, here's an example, even if we have read the Bible many times and studied it often, we still listen and gladly to what the Lord says because I don't know about you, I mean, I've studied the Bible practically all, all my life, been a pastor for 27 years, and even though I go, and I go back and read portions of the Bible that I've read so many times, and the Lord is teaching me things that I had never thought of. I'd heard about a pastor who was at the home of one of his members. The lady of the house was trying to impress her pastor about how devout she was by pointing to the large Bible on the bookshelf. She even called it God's Word. And then her young son interrupted the conversation and said, well, if that is God's book, we had better send it back to him because we never read it. So having the ears of a servant is one thing, but actually using them to listen to our Lord is quite another. 
There are times when his word reaches our ears, but we really don't listen to them. We, we do that all the time. Sounds hear, hit our ears, but we're not listening. But thankfully, God doesn't stop speaking to us. He keeps on speaking. One of, one of the wonderful things, of, God-given things about our congregation is that we have several Bible studies that give us opportunities to listen to the Lord. We offer, and, and many, many of you use portals of prayer or something else, some other devotional tool to bring God's voice to your ears on a daily basis. I encourage you, if you have something that works for you, keep on doing it. And if you're struggling to find something, I can help you with that. But use whatever works for you to bring God's voice to your ears on a regular basis. Our services, thankfully, are live streamed and recorded so that we can watch and listen when we're not able to make it to church or if we want to listen to it again. Samuel had the ears of a servant. May God give us servant ears so that we would gladly listen to the Lord. But God wasn't calling Samuel just to see if he was listening. He had work for Samuel to do. With the ears of a servant listening to the Lord, Samuel was ready to respond with the actions of a servant. And when the Lord called Samuel, he went into action. And so Samuel, if you read throughout, uh, continue on in, in reading about Samuel, you'll find out that he led the armies of Israel. He became the circuit-riding judge for his people. When he was an old man, he had then anointed Saul as the first king of Israel. Later, he anointed David as king. In all his years, he faithfully listened to the Lord with, and responded with the actions of a servant. As the book of James says, do not merely listen to the word, do what it says. Like Samuel, the Lord calls us to listen to his word with the ears of a servant and then to respond with the actions of a servant. And yet, isn't that where we struggle sometimes? Exactly how do we listen to the Lord and then respond with the actions of a servant? Well, it's, I don't know about you, it's very unlikely that God will wake us up in the middle of the night and speak to us like he did to Samuel. He, he, does, he speaks to us in different ways today. But our calling to serve the Lord often comes from God in maybe what we might call more ordinary ways. If you're a husband, the Lord asks you to serve him by loving your wife. If you're a wife, the Lord asks you to show the actions of service to him by loving your husband. Children are called to serve the Lord by obeying their parents and other authorities. Father, fathers and mothers are entrusted with the work of caring for their children and teaching them to listen to the Lord. As an employee, God calls us to do our job as he himself, as if he was our ultimate boss. As a member of the congregation, God calls us to love our church, to treat this as our special home from God, and to respond to the need of his mission and ministry as we are able. And when we're not at church during the week, every day we run into people who may need an encouraging word, a smile, or a simple act of friendship. Now, all of these things may not sound like grand and glorious things, but maybe God hasn't called us to lead an army or to serve as a judge like with Samuel or anoint someone as king. But the Lord has still called us to carry out even the more ordinary tasks of our everyday life to his glory and the job that he has given to us that is unique. And with that also comes the great mission of sharing the gospel, to love others as he loves us, to forgive as we have been forgiven. When and where and how that happens, we don't always know. But we do know that the Lord will use us. And he will do so in mighty ways. Like he did in the life of Samuel, God uses us. 
He uses our lives to train us for service. As he gave Samuel the abilities he needed, God gives us what we need to serve him. As he put the heart of of a servant into Samuel, he puts the heart of a servant into each one of us. Samuel, Samuel, speak, for your servant is listening. May God make us like Samuel. May he give us the ears of a servant that listen closely and carefully. May he also give us the actions of a servant so that we say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And then with the ears of a servant, we respond with the actions of a servant. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard God's word to us, and now we are emboldened and enabled and invited to come and speak to our Lord in prayer. And so today in our prayers, we uh, lift up uh, to the Lord uh, those uh, concerns of others that he has placed on our hearts. And so we lift up today in prayer all those who are listed on our blue insert. We've also been asked, in addition to that list, to pray for Marianne Mullady. Uh, and so uh, it just says prayers for friends in Minnesota. So we uh, lift uh, them up in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you call your people to various works of service in your kingdom. We pray that like Samuel, we would graciously hear that and, and respond to that call and faithfully do the work that you have called us to do in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you would make us like Philip, who after seeing your son Jesus went and told Nathaniel about him. Move us to faithfully tell others about Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection for the sake of all. Open our lips that we might proclaim his redeeming love and grace to all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, you desire that your house be filled with your faithful people. Yet there are many who have wandered away from you. There are many who have rejected your word. Lord, bless the outreach efforts of our congregation and of the church throughout the world, that those who have wandered from you might be brought back into your kingdom of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you hold in your hand all human might. Remember those who are entrusted with civil authority. Protect and grant wisdom to all those who serve in our government and all public servants, including our armed forces, police, and first responders, that our common life conforms to your will. In these times of tension and division in our nation, Calm our hearts and minds and direct us to your word and purpose that we may live in peace and quietness, knowing that your hand rests upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all compassion, we ask you to remember today all those who are passing through difficult situations in life. We pray for the lonely, the sick, the hospitalized, the recovering, the dying and the grieving, those who are troubled in any way, and all those whom we have been asked to remember before this altar, including all of those whom we have named, together with those that we now remember silently in our hearts. Lord, bring them the comfort that you alone can give and grant them relief according to your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you send your Son into the world to suffer and die on the cross to grant us forgiveness. Bless us this day as we come and partake in his holy body and blood in this Lord's Supper. 
Grant us faithfully to receive the forgiveness won for us by Christ and his sacrifice for our sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, you have shown us the face of your mercy in your Son, through whom all nations may find unity in life. Hear the prayers of your people and grant what is needful to us and those for whom we pray that trust in your mercy our hearts may find perfect peace and rest. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship now continues as we gather our tithes and offerings and grateful thanks to our Lord and to support the ongoing mission and ministry of his church. We now prepare our hearts to receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, and as you are able, I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As the uh, praise team comes up uh, to uh, set up for the closing uh, song, I want to again welcome everyone, including our guests. And again, uh, if you haven't done so, uh, guests, please sign the guest book out in the hallway. Um, in, uh, you'll want to be sure to take a look at Coastlines uh, today that has all of the information regarding uh, activities and uh, what's happening in the life of our congregation, including a uh, the latest uh, segment on, on the ministry goals and vision that we uh, kind of established uh, uh, last month. Uh, Christmas card donations for the Operation Christmas Child and a call for coloring books, uh, saving the date. Uh, next week is the uh, Alpha Women's uh, Center Stuff the Truck event. So things, if you have things around the house that you no longer need, uh, that's a great way to uh, not only get rid of them, but also to help support uh, that uh, ministry. Uh, ladies Bible study that will be starting up, as, as well as our choir and a uh, handbells uh, information. So a lot of things are happening in the life of our congregation that you want to be sure uh, to read up on. Uh, many uh, thanks to our uh, praise team for leading worship today, and uh, uh, let us stand as we are sent forth in the Lord's name, and as we uh, uh, sing the song entitled, Jesus Messiah.
in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord. Ooh.